Christ, the blessings of God, that is. All right? So here comes these false teachers that write books on generational curses. And they quote this passage from Deuteronomy 5 and Exodus 20, and they say that God promises to send a curse on the third and fourth generation of those who are idolaters. Okay? So then what they say is that the reason Christians have problems in their lives is that there are unknown generational curses at work that is giving the devil the right to come into their lives and that they won't get free from those generational curses until somebody gets a revelation about what the curse was and then they have to go through some process of breaking the curse. The people writing the books, of course, give themselves as the answer to this. They have the key. They have the secret. You have to know either their revelation knowledge or their special process to get these curses out of your lives. Okay. Let's pick two people that have done some pretty extensive writing along these lines. Neil Anderson was one of them. I don't know that we've ever really explored any of his work on any of our programs, but based on Exodus, again, 20 verses 4 and 5, he made comment that demons pass from one generation to another. And you quoted that in your paper yes. out of his book called The Bondage Breakers. Right. Tell us more about that. Well, Neil Anderson, like these other false teachers, claims that Christians are cursed. Contrary to the clear teaching of the Bible, which we just explained for a half hour last week and 15 minutes this week, Neil Anderson said, no, Christians are cursed, that demons are passed from generation to generation, and these demons have grounded the lives of Christians because of generational sins. To get the curse of these demonic strongholds out of their lives, according to Anderson, Christians supposedly need to find out what they are, use utterances, which he calls prayers, to break them, and they need counselors with special knowledge of these things if there are severe cases. And he gives them examples of what you need to do to get these things out of your life. Well, interestingly, I looked up your reference in uh, pages 201, 202, 203, right in there. There actually were checklists of yeah. things you had to work out. Yeah, he has charts and checklists and you got this in your life, you need to say this, and this goes on, you need to say that. Too bad nobody in the New Testament knew about this, but... Now we have Neil Anderson to fill us in on what the apostles forgot to teach us. But anyhow, quote, this is something that Anderson suggests that we need to do. I cancel out all demonic working that has been passed on to me from my ancestors, unquote. We're supposed to say that. Now listen, let's just think about how many problems there are with this false teaching. Number one, he quotes Exodus 20. Where in the world in Exodus 20, 4 and 5 does it say anything about demons? Not there. Did it say Satan was going to curse people? No, it said that God would visit the iniquities of the third and fourth generation. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say if you go out and buy a Ouija board, your grandson will have a demon. It does not say that. It doesn't say that in any of these passages. Neil Anderson creates this in his own head, imports it into the Bible where it isn't, and then suggests that being in Christ is only potentially the answer, not the answer if you're already in Christ. In other words, even though you're in Christ, you still have the demon, you still have the curse, you need to have this extra knowledge that Anderson offers to get delivered from it. You did a paper, we did a program dealing with that general problem a short time ago, and I think it was the Colossian heresy. Yeah, this is just another example of the Colossian heresy. The Colossian heresy says that being in Christ doesn't really solve the problem. That the demons are still going to get you. It's not enough. And that there are these forces of darkness out there that are causing bad things to happen in the life of the Christian, and the only way to get rid of them is by special revelation knowledge that only certain elite people have. And it's not provided for us in Christ, according to the Colossian heretics. Anderson is just another version of the Colossian heresy. Okay, how about Derek Prince? Well, he's pretty famous for this, and I read his entire book carefully. And I have to say that I disagree with Derek Prince. But at least when you read in there, you can find the gospel. i got to give him credit for that. I found the gospel in there, and I found some teaching that was right. But the error that he falls into is the same one at Anderson, and that is that, yeah, we know what the gospel is, and we know what the Bible says, and we know that we need Christ and the cross, but coming to Christ is not enough to deliver us from the curse, we need to also go through these processes that they suggest. And the end run, I don't care how sincere they are and how much they're trying to help people, all they do is take away from us the confidence that we have in Christ. Because you always have these unknown things. 
they don't really use the Bible properly. For instance, Derek Prince uses this analogy that he gets from Matthew fifteen thirteen. He says this, quote, A person who comes from such a background is heir to a curse that may be compared to a weed planted in his life, linking him to satanic forces outside himself. This weed has two kinds of roots, a long taproot going straight downward and less powerful lateral roots. The taproot represents the influence of ancestors who worship false gods. So he says that if you had ancestors who commit idolatry, Satan has this hold in your life deep down inside of you. And that this is true even if you're a Christian, which is where we are parting company. Where does he go with the analogy? I mean, you have to uproot that thing Well, then he another. says, here's what he says, quote, before he can enjoy true liberty and fullness of the new creation of Christ, this weed must be completely pulled out with all its roots. And then he quotes Matthew fifteen thirteen about pulling out weeds that the Father's not planted. But that had to do with the Pharisees' false teachings and their rejecting of Christ's teaching. It has nothing to do with casting demons out of Christians. So that's a total misuse of the passage. And you know, I don't care how nice these guys are. I know they're nice. It's a good thing to be nice, I suppose. But it doesn't justify abusing the scriptures. And I think a lot of people are deceived because saintly, kind, old men like Derek Prince, I listened to him a lot when I was a young Christian. He was one of my favorites. He's an admirable guy in many ways, and I don't doubt that he's a very quality person. But I don't care. Matthew fifteen thirteen still does not teach what Derek Prince says it teaches. And the Bible does not teach that Christians are full of demons because of something that their great-grandfather did. And so false teaching is still false teaching. And I don't understand why. I don't understand somebody as well-educated as Mr. Prince, someone who is as dedicated as he is, as far as I know, has such a blind spot when it comes to studying the Bible. But nevertheless, if you believe what's false, you come into bondage from the false teaching. You've got a lot greater danger of being in bondage to false teaching as a Christian, because we're warned about that, than you do becoming demonized because of something your grandfather did. If we take this to the next step, it's a line out of your paper, but I think it really leads us in the right direction. Current popular teachings on generational curses leave little hope for anyone. That's one of the things that comes through all of this discussion we're having so far, is where's the hope in here? How do you get ahead of the power curve on this thing? Well, okay. And without judging motives, I can at least judge the obvious consequences. Derek Prince himself says this, Each of us has two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, 16 great-great-grandparents. Now, that doesn't count any deaths and remarriages or whatever. It may make more people in our family tree, okay? This makes a total of 30 persons, any one of whom might be the cause of the curse in our lives. That's what he says. I'm quoting him. Now, listen, if you have to sit here and think, 30 people, most of whom I never knew, most of whom I know nothing about, if any one of them was anything less than a pristine Christian, if any one of them was in some sort of an unchristian cult or did something false or did something having to do with astrology or anything, any occult activity, then I have a demon. And I can't even know who that is. So how do you find out? Well, you have to go to one of these revelators who gets a revelation that this is what's going on, and how do you know they're right? Well, you have to trust them. So this guru comes along and says, God told me that your great-grandfather was in the occult, so i got to break this curse over your life. When do you get done with this? When are you ever going to know you're not cursed? And when are you ever going to be sure you don't have a demon? Because now we've got another 29 ancestors we haven't gone through yet. And I'm saying that all they're doing is creating a lot of clients for themselves because everybody's going to be cursed under this teaching. And in a way, they would be right if they didn't do such a poor job of showing the efficacies of the finished work of Christ. Because as a matter of fact, we're all cursed because of Adam's sin. The only ancestor that really matters is Adam. According to Romans 5, in Adam, all sinned. And so the curse is caused by sin. And every one of us comes into this world already cursed. I don't care if you come from four generations of Baptist preachers, and that your mom and dad spent all of their lives in Bible college and seminary and ministry, and that from birth they prayed for you and sang Christian songs to you, and that you grew up in Sunday school, that you're surrounded nothing but the most glorious Christian stuff from day one. I'm telling you right now, 